Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 multiplayer action, and I recently have been putting a lot of my battle replays into uh, faction-specific playlists, so you guys be sure to check that out on the uh, channel page if you haven't, and in doing so I realized I don't put out a lot of Wood Elf replays, so here we go. We've got a uh, Wood Elf community cast here featuring my favorite Wood Elf Lord, Mr. Ancient Tree Man, up against the High Elves. Let's take a look here. We've also got Double Way Stalker, huge fan of that. As you guys know, I've been recently evangelizing, filling your slots, your hero slots, that is, uh, with heroes in all cases, and the Way Stalkers are a nice, cheap a kind of missile hero option to fill your slots. We've got some eternal guards with shields, a uh, glade guard. We've got a lot of wild riders here, three wild riders, and a sister of thorn for a nice, fast cavalry contingent for the high elves. Here we've got a ton of archers. Looks like five unit of archers, a couple bolt throwers, some reaver archers, a front line of spears mixed with phoenix guard, and look at that! It's Gil Galleon, the uh, high elf prince. So if the princess is Nalosi, then this is Gilgalion right here with a Shadow Mage. She's got Enfeebling Foe and Withering. Going to be look looking to debuff some targets. So Wood Elves right off the bat pushing up, being very aggressive, obviously. With these Bolt Throwers, they're kind of forced into an aggressive position here. But trying to bait Gilgalion and this uh, Shadow Mage away. Uh, I've also taken a little bit of damage on these Wild Riders over on the far side, but so far nothing overly substantial. They're taking a little bit of HP damage here and there, but nothing too big. Looks like we're going to get uh, upgraded regrowth on these Wild Riders here to help heal up that HP damage that they've taken. Uh, not an upgraded, actually just regular regrowth, yep. So a pretty efficient use there. These Wild Riders going to come forward. Will they actually get the charge on the Reavers? Nope, looks like they don't actually have a charge order there. So, uh, yeah, these Wild Riders don't have shields either, so they're, they're going to be very vulnerable to taking some fire from those archers. But the Wood Elves returning fire very efficiently with their Glade Guard. Likewise, the High Elves kind of uh, using their Concave in this corner to fire in here. A nice... Uh, Shield of Thorns in the front line there will help those Eternal Guard trade pretty efficiently in that front line engagement. Meanwhile, Gilgalion is going to be the uh, subject of the Ancient Tree Man as he comes forward. But the Wood Elves, with their fast attack here, the Sisters of Thorn in particular with their physical resistance, um, because of that physical resistance, they're going to be mostly immune to this fire. Uh, I shouldn't say immune necessarily, but I believe it's what, like 40% physical resistance on these gals right here? Yeah, 40%, so... They come in here just absolutely wreck, and you can see how that bow fire doesn't do a ton to them initially, as long as they can stay moving, and a nice pancake sandwich on that uh, unit of archers there. Nice kind of side charge here as well, so some excellent play from the Light Cavalry from the Wood Elves here. Meanwhile, Eternal Guard actually trade very cost-effectively with Phoenix Guard. Uh, the stat differential isn't so great. I mean, it's pretty substantial, but at the same time, the Eternal Guard are, uh, you know, they have that armor-piercing damage. They trade well upwards into most targets um, as I like to say they trade well with more anything more expensive than them they tend to trade poorly with things that are less expensive than them as a rule but Gilgalian's fighting his best here with the mage debuffing kind of spears fighting and supporting on both sides so it's pretty much a wash at this point um, with healing on the uh, wood elf side though a regrowth on tree man himself is going to be giving him that vigor refresh especially and the health of course as he continues to fight and grind with Gilgalion there. Uh, meanwhile, the Wood Elves have won the range fight for the most part. Been able to collapse a lot of the ranged units here in the back line for the High Elves uh, with the Light Cavalry uh, advantage here. Now going to be collapsing for a beautiful rear charge. Let's get straight in for that as they pancake in on those spearmen. Help to route them off here, break up this flank a little bit. And uh, this Waystalker kiting out these Phoenix Guard. Let's check in 41 kills on that Waystalker. And 47. I haven't really been highlighting these guys too much, but they're going to be pretty key in this late game here. As uh, the, the Wood Elves are taking an advantage on the balance of power, but High Elves still have plenty left in the back line here. Still plenty of Illyrian Reavers especially, and the Archers and so on, able to establish a pretty good firing presence here. Looks like they're actually shooting the Sisters of Thorn, which is, in my, mistake, in my opinion, a mistake. You definitely want to try and finish the Wild Riders. As a primary target, since the sisters have that physical resistance, they themselves, though, have done excellent work. 57 kills in an XP chevron. Um, I don't have a ton of Wood Elf replays um, up recently, but if you go back 
and not all of my Wood Elf replays are, are on there because I have literally thousands of re <laughs> videos. I haven't been able to put them all into those playlists, but if you do look up Wood Elf videos on my channel, you'll find quite a few of Sisters of Thorn just absolutely doing massive amounts of work if used appropriately, and this is definitely a replay where I would say they've been used appropriately uh, using their both their skirmish potential and their melee potential using their support buffs as well very nicely done and the glade guard here this is one thing that glade guard are great at is kind of pushing forward with an established miss missile presence to kind of clean up an enemy's uh, skirmish very very effective meanwhile let's check in with gilgallion and the tree man good old uh, tree beard here proper tree beard not angry tree beard that's Darthu. but uh Proper tree beard here with Gilgallion. He's actually got some Phoenix Guard now supporting, but Wild Riders had come in for a rear charge as well. Uh, looks like we're going to be getting some uh, Shield of Thorns. Unfortunately, Gilgallion does not have healing, and despite the shadow magic being used consistently here, the uh, Waystalker comes in with a few clutch arrows in the back. Because, uh, yeah, it's never a fair fight with the Wood Elves, right? They don't fight fair at all. And so he's going to come in here, draw an arrow. Oop, oh, maybe, maybe. There we go. A little bit of a janky shot there, but he gets it off nonetheless. Able to finish off Gilgallion's leadership, and now it's just these Phoenix Guard grinding here. Handful of units out in the periphery. Most of the Light Cav has been cleaned up. Only seven Sisters of Thorn still fighting there, but they're still fighting. 300 HP left. <laughs> Very impressive. Meanwhile, this other Waystalkers come into melee combat with these uh, Phoenix Guard here. I believe that's army losses. Waystalkers are not pushovers, complete pushovers in melee combat either, although they're more meant as duelist type characters. They have the dual swords, they can do okay, they don't have anti-infantry or anything, but 55 attack, 45 defense, 325 weapon strength, certainly not pushovers by any means. Um, yeah, good stuff. Now it's just a matter of cleaning up the High Elves' leadership here. When I say leadership, I do mean their actual leadership, not their leadership units, but... Treebeard, not as angry as Durthu, but certainly very angry. Angry enough to slam his staff into the ground here, get some nice splash attacks to finish off these Wood Elves. A little bit of supporting fire from those Glade Guard. Beautiful stuff. Oh yeah, you don't get to see the Ancient Tree Man used too often, but I am a big fan. For a nice kind of caster lord all in one. Ooh, gets the foot crush right there. Absolute brutality, fatality in the end game there. And that will proc army losses or at least a terror route. Yep, army losses. So very fun stuff. Big thanks uh, to Highland Hunter for posting that one. And uh, yeah, good work across the board with the light cavalry. Uh, a few of them kind of took some shots, but 138 kills in XP Chevron, 88 kills in XP Chevron for the Sisters of Thorn. And uh, Ancient Tree Men there standing and grinding with Gilgallion for quite some time. I didn't check the charge bonus on the Prince. You guys will have to go back and let me know on the UI there. Um, but that, the Prince, uh, Gilgallion on horseback, definitely most characters, most melee characters on horseback have a good charge bonus. So he definitely wanted it to be cycle charging uh, Gilgallion there as much as possible. But hey, uh, you know, almost worked out. The Phoenix Guard ended up racking up a ton of kills. Just didn't quite have enough to protect his back line. I think, honestly, just dropping like one of these Reaver Archers and one regular Archer for two melee Reavers to kind of counter charge against Wild Riders. Um, they'll get eaten alive, but you can kind of, you know, if you pick good engagements, kind of block them up. And at least try and tr contest that engagement. The so the sorry the Illyrian Reavers can do okay, or you can even opt for Silver Helms, which will trade a little bit more efficiently, um, in my experience. But nonetheless, a very fun stuff. Uh, yeah, fun build for the Wood Elves, for the High Elves. I mean, both throwers pretty decent stuff. Uh, yeah, Gilgallion. I also don't necessarily hate the pick of Gilgallion in this matchup because he is pr pretty cheap. Um, so if we go ahead and have a look here. Um, now, obviously, you usually see him up on the Star Dragon, but on the horseback, I mean, he's relatively cheap, especially if you come in here, kind of cheap him out a little bit. Yeah, 50 charge bonus on him, so not the most, but you definitely would want to try and take advantage of that. Um, if you wanted to make him into a little bit of a combatant here, you could grab Deadly Onslaught, Bow Seeker, grab that Blade, bleh, bleh, blade of Bell Caradris to give himself a little bit of a power spike buff. Um, it does give only armor piercing damage, though, so I don't know if this is necessarily worth it to even try on foot. Or on um, horseback, I guess, on either of those two. But, uh, yeah, something like this. 
And then I don't necessarily dislike the pick of the Shadow Mage either. I would definitely take Penumbral Pendulum here, just as a DPS option, uh, kind of an AoE damage option against Wood Elf Infantry. It's good against all Wood Elf Infantry and Cavalry for that matter, so I would take that. Withering, I'm not the biggest fan of that. I mean, if you do have to fight a tree unit, it's only 30, which is really not enough to be impactful in that type of a situation, so... Um, as things stand right now, I might take, like, Occam's Mind Razor instead uh, to try and buff the weapon damage of whatever unit is fighting it, or just take these two for a little bit of a cheaper loadout. Um, and then from there, actually, I might honestly take Lore of Light right now. Uh, the Mean Psychology, not as important for the High Elves, so I might cut that, but Foz Protection, Nets, and Barona's Time Warp, just to juice up your stats even more, um, might be decent against the High Elves. You could consider Banishment as well, but... Either Shadows or Light here in this type of a build, and then yeah, the Spearmen here go pretty wide with the Archers. Let's grab a couple of Melee Reavers. In fact, let's go a little bit um, in a different direction. Rather than taking so much Skirmish, we're going to go in a little bit of a Counter Charge type roll. Uh, so we're going to go pretty heavy on the Cavalry, a lot of Silver Helms, a lot of Illyrian Reavers, and I feel like I'm missing something here. Uh, this is just, yeah, large funds, I don't know. You guys will have to let me know. I guess you could come in here, maybe grab like a Noble Chariot, although you don't necessarily have healing for it. Eh, we don't quite have enough, so maybe not. Um, you could do a handful of different things here. Something to this effect, I guess I'm missing the Phoenix Guard is the main thing. I don't really don't have much here that can take on uh, trees, which would be an, a danger for sure. But I feel like if you just clean, clean out the trees enough, and then I guess, yeah... I guess you could come in here and, um, hmm, trying to think what would be the best way. Just about have enough for one unit of Sisters of Avalorn, so I might try and find the funds to pick that up here. Like, honestly, even just dropping Stand Your Ground just to be able to get the one Sister of Avalorn. Uh, maybe you come in here, drop one of those Silver Helms, just because that's a lot of cavalry, and <laughs> get a second you know, second one of those, we could come in here and even, like, get a, a fifth Spearman, something like that. I'm kind of fine-tuning a little bit, but this is what you do, what you need to do when you're playing as High Elves. And my one main gripe with this build is it doesn't have any Source of Terror, which I believe you should, if you're playing a faction that can be terrified, i.e. not undead, you should bring Terror always. But it's okay. I mean, something like this could definitely work decently well against the Wood Elves. Let me know. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I always enjoy reading your guys' feedback, so thank you once again for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button, so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.